that it was a shock to so many people. I mean, it brought home very quickly, because these were the early days of the war, the horrific reality of what you were confronting. But what's interesting about your book is that it's about the families. It's about the families who, who weren't there and had to wait and watch and get little bits of snippets of news. It, it was, must have been awful for them. It was really bad. So again, if you, you have to take yourself back 30 years. I think I'm right in saying that Sky had just started uh, 24 hours. Sky News had just started 24 hour broadcasting. And this was the first real televised war. And so the families were watching this unfold. I spoke to one wife. Uh, you remember Gordon Buckley and Paddy Teagle, of course, who led one of the very first operations. And Paddy's wife was sitting back home in Germany at our base with some of the other wives at kind of three o'clock in the morning drinking tea on the first night of the war. And she watched the jets, because you were broadcasting live, watched the jets landing, and guys were getting down and taking their helmets off, and her husband wasn't there. And so she's then thinking, oh my God, has he survived the first operation? And it's, it's quite difficult to think of that now. And, and sadly, as you know, some people did get that terrible knock on the door that said, your loved one is not coming home. And I write about that. It's really quite painful. Uh, and, and speaking to the family, speaking to the families and the, the, the wives and the, the mothers and the daughters of men who did not come home, yeah. that was quite painful while I was writing the book. Brought up a lot of memories for everybody, actually. And, 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 you know, some of the airmen were missing. You and John Peters were held, of course, and tortured by the Iraqis after being shot down. And the pictures in the newspapers, people will remember, I'm sure, came to, in some ways, symbolize the early part of that war. But we, we were thinking at the time of the airmen. We weren't really thinking of the families. But, but I think that nobody did. It was so unusual. So uh, if you join the military now, you expect to go to war. And the news channels uh, have live coverage of all you know, conflicts all of the time. Back then, in 1991, this was unpre totally unprecedented in the way that it was broadcast. And yes, so clearly myself and John Peters became a bit of a focus because we were shot down and paraded on TV. But... I'm not really talking about myself or John Peters and Luke, I'm talking about the other guys. So you've got somebody like Robbie Stewart and Dave Waddington, who you would have known who were shot down on the second night. So they were really badly injured when they were ejected. Uh, Robbie broke his legs, and uh, Dave had both of his shoulders dislocated. And the Iraqis were torturing Robbie by pulling his broken legs and twisting them, trying to get him to give them information. And I, I talked to Robbie's daughter, Kirsty, was 13 at the time, and it was really quite sad. She said, at the time, I was praying that my dad was dead because I didn't want him. I didn't want what had happened to you and John Peters. I didn't want what, that to happen to him. And in, in the back of my mind, I hoped that he was dead so he wasn't suffering. And it's not until you speak to that and curse you, man, we're in tears talking about this. And it's not until you get delved into those stories that you fully understand how war affects everybody involved. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We, we would film the planes, the aircraft coming back, and we could see some were missing, but our agreement was, quite rightly, yeah. that we couldn't report anything until the families had been yeah. told. And that really did bring home the suffering yeah. of, of, of the families. And, and you were there when people didn't come home. Um, I, remember, I think one of the big things that I wrote about the book was when... Um, uh, Steve Hicks was killed on the yeah. 14th, and Rupert Clark was shot down. And I, you know, I, I spoke to them, and I spoke to people who were there, and the journalists were really, really affected because you, uh, uh, yeah. the, the TV young journalist Tony Berkeley, your friend, had been playing squash with them that morning, and then they were dead. I'm oh, sorry, Steve was dead. And it really, really affected them. Yeah. Um, I'm I do, sure. yeah, yeah, we've only got a, a minute left, John. But I mean, the, in the book, you talk about how the pilots and navigators didn't want to tell their families when they were going on a mission. Just 40 that's, seconds. That's it. No, because if you, if every time you're about to embark on a mission, you say, I'm heading off, my love, I'll call you when I get back. If for some reason, when you don't get back, all the phones are down. Your loved ones are waiting at home for that call. And that stopped quite quickly. It yeah. was a it was a war that was fought by those on the front line and those waiting. Yeah, well look, John Nicholl, appreciate your time. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it.